Hello and welcome to another episode of Money and Me. You're listening to your host, Chaparuk Padasharya, and today we have a very special guest in our show today. Please welcome Maria Sankovic. She's the Chief Business Development Officer of Exmo Exchange. Hi, Maria. Thank you. Hello. Thank you for having me. Pleasure to be here. Right, Maria. So tell us, how have you been? How crazy has uh, the crypto world been recently? <laughs> yeah, uh, we've been great, actually. So for us as an exchange, uh, any movement, either it's going up or either it's going down, is fantastic because we make money on the commission. So, you know, anything that happens on the crypto market is fantastic for us. When it's flat, then it's not so good. So, <laughs> yeah, we enjoyed it very much. All right. So tell us a little bit about your exchange. So Exmo was founded in 2014 and you joined the exchange in 2018 as a head of communications. So what was Exmo like in those first few initial years and what sort of changes have you personally brought into the exchange? Well, that's a, that's a very good question and uh, it's a fascinating story because we were one of the first exchanges actually on the market and uh, we are very proud of it because, you know, not many exchanges survived for all these years, the years of scams, the years of ICOs, you know, and so, so far so on. So we were like, you know, there were five Three, four, three, four, five people in the beginning because uh, you know uh, that was per- you know that was a perfect example of how a small team that wants to achieve something do that. So mm-hmm. guys were answering the the messages on the forums. I remember. Uh, that uh, the guys were basically, they were conducting uh, the PR publications, they did some uh, support uh, functions. So basically they were doing all that by themselves. And now we are 200 people. And, you know, uh, when I look back at everything that we had, I really, I can't imagine, I can't really imagine how big we grew and how amazing our team is now. And when we're saying like, we, we are located in three different cities, here in London, uh, in Moscow and in Kiev, uh, we have three teams and uh, this is absolutely fantastic. So we started as, a, as, a, as I mentioned, like a small crypto exchanger. Uh, yeah, we we did like a few pairs. By the way, uh, that, that's funny because uh, we recently, when the Dogecoin was really, you know, booming, uh, we saw that we were the first exchange actually that listed it. So oh. uh, <laughs> yeah, oh, wow, that's we listed amazing. it. Yeah, right after it, it was created, so we listed it, and now we see that, for example, like Coinbase listed it, or right. you know, other exchanges just now, and we were like, "You guys, you see that we were so smart back then." So yeah, we developed dramatically. So we were like a small exchange, and now we are a full uh, exchange that is that has temporary registration by FCA. Uh, so we are compliant with FCA. We are registered in Britain, and uh, we have uh, you know different different processes, different services. We have uh, all you know. The most important probably thing is that we have bank accounts. And back then, I remember that we were right into all the banks, all the payment systems, and most of all, we're not eager to do anything with crypto. Yeah. And uh, they were saying very offensive things to us, so, like you know, you guys, uh, you are scammers, and you know, so, so far so on. And now we have SIPA, we have Swift, we have uh, different pay- payment channels, uh, we have good communicate, good good partnerships uh, with um, traditional finance institutions so that that's absolutely amazing i mean the 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 growth that we had so that's a that's a lot of progress which exmo has gone through and i was really delighted to hear the dogecoin uh, story which you did yeah. <laughs> that's incredible <laughs> yeah yeah exactly because you know um, our operation director just you know a few months ago he posted a new um, a section you know like from the news section an mm-hmm. article um, about that Do- dogecoin was listed on exmo and it was like right after its creation so yeah. that was like wow guys that's amazing Crazy. that's amazing that's amazing yeah that's very smart <laughs> <laughs> exactly. what about you maria what 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 were the kind of changes you brought into exmo like the person you are you are a communicator by profession so what sort of communication change has exmo seen while you have been heading it in the last couple of years well 
Yeah, absolutely. I can say that we all did this because, of course, I'm uh, now I'm head of business development, and uh, prior to that, I was responsible for communications. Uh, but that's usually like the whole team. We have an amazing team that helps each other uh, in terms of everything. If you have a problem, or if you're, you know, if you have a problem with your client, for example, everybody is super eager to help him. Even it's, I don't know, if it's midnight or if it's, uh, I don't know. Uh, weekends whatever uh i believe that's that's really important and that's really amazing uh for you know for both our clients and for ours like you know our my self esteem or my um, my desire to work for this company that's amazing so i believe not only me but you know we all yeah. made really great changes so uh, to start with, uh, we, you know, we created this uh, amazing, in my opinion, amazing, <laughs> amazing uh, process of listing new coins. So we were famous for, uh, you know, for not listing scam, let's put it this way. And we still, we still are. Uh, we never listed any scam coins for, for many, for, for my, you know, for whatever money they wanted to give us. And we have this very strict process of listing coins. So we evaluate the project from different angles. We have both uh, legal, uh, legal evaluation and, um, um, compliance evaluation and technical evaluation, the evaluation of the team and the roadmap, um, the community of the project. So we, you know, sometimes really we, we have like, I don't know, thousands of inquiries every day, maybe not thousands now, but we used to uh, just because, you know, we are out of projects <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know, a lot of coins, they were complaining about the process, how, how long it is and how, you know, tiresome it is. But I believe we can really be proud of it. And, um, you know, that's, I can't really say because that will be an investment advice. So I am not in the position to advise, you know, from, from the investment point. But I believe our clients, uh, a lot of them said that this is, um, you know, this is a sort of, quality uh quality mark when Exmo listed a coin so that that means you know the the coin has some quality i believe that 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 can be great another thing i'm responsible for the vap clients so mm -hmm. i believe uh you know vap clients for us is uh the client that trades uh, more than uh, one to five million uh, per month. Uh, so uh, I believe we also we created a great process of communicating with them. Everybody has a special chat in Telegram. So uh, we basically we have uh, the support for them 24/7. Uh, they are uh, using the best fees that they can get from the market. So they you know any issue can be solved in five minutes. And well, not any issue, but I mean their their reply will be in five minutes. But we are trying to uh, you know to, to do that as fast as we can so and um you know very connected thing to that is otc process so we are very proud of our otc desk uh that is also like it's it's very personal you know like some, that's that's a very interesting thing because sometimes like otc is usually an automated process and uh sometimes people like why do we have this you know physical person appearance uh you know during this process and i believe like this is a psychological thing if a person wants to exchange i don't know one million dollar or i don't know five million uh just uh, you know in one deal uh that's very scary especially for those who never did this before so they basically they send some money somewhere they don't know it where they don't have a contact they don't have a personal contact with someone so that that can be scary and uh, that's why we created this safe environment we, we for example that's a telegram chat where we add our lawyers our financial department representatives our basically vap manager who will be supporting these clients uh, you know through the whole process and everybody is super happy and um, i personally me i stole some clients from kraken and they're extremely happy about that i mean where is kraken and where is exmo i understand that but they that that's also my i guess like personal uh personal record i guess <laughs> so, yeah great so i read that you will be attending the blockchain for europe summit 2021 on the second week of june so can you tell our listeners what topics you will be talking about and what they can expect from your attendance over there 
Yeah, that's a uh, that's very great conference. So uh, we have the section that is supported by Crypto UK. That's a, a, an organization um, that is basically, I believe, the only organization that uh, um, makes a great input in crypto and crypto regulation. Um, yeah, and uh, I will be speaking um, in the discussion panel. Uh, we will be talking about the about the like, challenges and obstacles crypto industry has at the moment. Uh, we will be discussing uh, travel rule, uh, um, travel rule, uh, FCRA regulations, um, uh, DeFi regulation, NFT regulation, and uh, all these uh, new you know new hot topics. Uh, that must be regulated and um, how are they supposed to be regulated and you know like it's very interesting because we have on the panel we have different um, representatives of different industries for example me as an exchange uh, we have a lot of interesting information practical information I mean like how it should be work, work, working in theory and how it doesn't work in any way in practical way so like you know about the regulation uh so it must be very interesting we yes yesterday we had sort of like a you know initial discussion on uh what are we going to say there and you know we had plenty of uh you know debates uh, so it's going to be hard i guess because everybody has very strong opinion on right. what's happening with the regulation in the uk and you probably know yesterday they uh they expanded uh the uh, the FCA has expanded the uh, temporary registration for, for the firms. Uh, we were supposed to get the permanent registration by 9th of July, or I mean, not get, but still like the deadline was, was 9th of July. And now we have it till March. So right. it's sort of limbo. And, uh, you know, for some firms, that's probably get great. But for us, it's like, you know, nine more months of uncertainty because, you know, it's very hard. And, uh, you know, the UK, it's considered to be the fintech mecca. And, uh, yeah, we, yesterday we were discussing, like, maybe not anymore. I mean, what's <laughs> happening here? So we are very uncertain about, uh, about everything. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about the scene in Eastern Europe because Exmo also has branches in Moscow and Kiev. So what can you tell us about the crypto scene in Eastern Europe and how different is crypto trading there when compared to Asia or America? Basically, two main, uh, two main things. Um, first of all, we started as a European, Eastern European crypto exchange because we started uh, with, uh, with the great database in Russia and Ukraine. So we originally, we were considered as a Russian crypto exchange or Ukrainian one, you know, despite the fact that we were registered in Britain for our whole time. But, you know, that's, that's what it was. Uh, so, you know, two main things that I personally, me, I noticed um, we have a great compliance process. Uh, the, the main idea of this compliance is to be sure that your money is not stolen. They are not coming from like very, very criminal some, some sources or, you know, basically we must be sure that you are a great citizen. They just create, trade crypto and you did nothing wrong. Right. Um, so that's, that's the first thing. And, you know, when, when, we, uh, when we speak about the Europe, Everybody is eager to show us source of funds that usually the compliance uh, asks us for. And uh, if you trade crypto, you know that basically every exchange that is, you know, compliant with the rules, with the AML FIFS uh, directive, um, you know, they ask you for the source of funds. And that's absolutely fine. European users are fine with that. When we go to Russia and when we ask a Russian citizen, for example, for source of funds, you have no idea. I mean, they're so uneager to, to show us something. And that's not because they are criminals. They're just, you know, their perception that we're going to, I don't know, send this source of funds to the, you know, tax, uh, some tax authority. Yeah. Or, you know, so they are very scary. Uh, what's going to happen with this? So, so they are not very, you know, they don't feel very safe back there. So I believe that's the first, uh, the first thing that uh, European users accept QIC and compliance as a good thing. But mm -hmm. there in Eastern Europe, they still have this feeling that compliance and QIC is not good and it's not going to protect them. It's going to be, you know, used against them. That's the main idea, the main, the main 
um, yeah, the main thing. Uh, the second one, uh, you know, Russian, uh, Russian, or uh, you know, in comparison with Europe, uh, Russia and uh, other parts of Eastern Europe, uh, they're more retail users because it's not possible to deposit via big banks because the regulation there is still, you know, not supporting any possibility for the user deposits funds from the bank account. So, so the only way they can use it, they can, you know, deposit via credit cards, and uh, that's basically that's it. Uh, so uh, not that big amounts of uh, funds are deposited, you know, from from these regions, and that's that's just because of the, you know, they 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 are not possible. Uh, they they don't have any possibility to deposit big sums of money, and I believe that's similar for uh, for Asia. Uh, I mean, uh, it's very uncertain. Um, you know, they still have very uncertain regulation. I mean, maybe Singapore, when Singapore is different, but, you know, other regions, uh, they are, you know, very uncertain, like China, they want to, first they want to ban, then they, they probably not, then ban, then again. So people are really scared uh, to, to deal with crypto. And that's, that's a very, uh, that's a very, you know, big difference. If you say about the America, uh, we at the moment, we... Um, we can work only in California because we are registered with FinCEN. Uh, so we we only now now we only open for Californian users. Mm -hmm. So we are going into the other states, but a little later. Uh, so I can't say that you know there are big differences uh, between America and uh, Europe, but maybe we will see when we go further and we will see some differences. But Americans, they they are definitely more um, you know they they. They tend to write big letters. For example, if I see, if I scroll through support letters, so Europeans, they are more, you know, they, they understand probably more, uh, you know, what's happening there. So Americans, they tend to like, for example, if they don't see any transaction, they go to support and say that we, for example, we stole their money. And that's just because they didn't click on the right you know, right section, so they didn't see it, but they write that we are scammers and they're asking us to, to send the money back to them. So that's, you know, they tend to percept a crypto as scam or right. maybe that's just, uh, yeah, but I can't say for the whole America, so we, we just opened California. Right. Um, so let's talk about you, Maria. You can speak six languages, is that right? Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> yes, that's amazing. So which languages are those, if you don't mind telling us? Uh, of course. Uh, I speak Russian. That's my native language. I also speak Belarusian. That's also my native language. Yes. People think that they are, they are like very similar, but they're not. Uh, Belarusian and Ukrainian are very similar. Okay. Uh, so that's two of them. I, obviously, I speak English. <laughs> <laughs> I also speak German and I speak Italian. I actually also speak Swedish, uh, but it's so rusty uh, because I studied there um, at the university. I studied in Stockholm, so yes. I, do I don't count Swedish as a language. So, I mean, for me, I mean, it's so rusty. <laughs> so just six, six of them. Yeah, I see. That's amazing. So you have been also in the field of communications for a very long time. That's how you began your uh, career. So can you share, uh, uh, share with us some of your experiences and maybe tell us the few good traits that determine a good communicator. Of course, yeah. Actually, I believe that communications taught me to be calm at any situation. Basically, you need to be cold, you need to be calm, you need to have a cold head. You you can't really react to this to the different kind of situations. You should be the person who you know who solves um, solves different problems and if you if you're going to be very emotional i mean i am emotional you can obviously see that that i'm very yeah i'm not like i'm not sitting here and you know staring at, at some point but i mean you must be emotional but you must uh you know you must react very smart and very clever because if you lose your head uh that can, you know, change a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, when you're working in PR, you probably saw this meme uh, when, uh, when a guy is riding a bicycle and, you know, fire, uh, you know, there, are, there is a fire around him and he's on fire. And basically that's, that's how, uh, you know, how a person <laughs> feels when he works for, you know, PR firm. 
So, uh, but that's, you know, that taught me that you must be calm at any situation. For example, we experienced um, the hack in December, 11 million was stolen. Right. And that was a very unpleasant uh, situation, of course, for all of us. But, you know, if you start freaking out, you, you can't do your job anymore. If you, if you start, uh, you know, crying or you start shouting or that's, that's not who you are anymore. That, that, doesn't, that means that you can't really, you know, make any decisions uh, that will be smart. So that's, that's the main idea. And, uh, yeah, the main, the main thing that I learned from uh, me being in PR because I was in a public relations for seven years and um that basically taught me you know a lot of different different and smart experiences i was working for the big uh, utility company that was an electricity holding uh, that had assets in europe in russia and you know different eastern european uh, countries and uh, there were different situations uh, when you know uh, when you could lose your head and uh, you know start crying or behaving like a, like a child or whatever, but you know when you maintain being calm and when you understand that this is not the end of the world and uh, basically everybody is alive and this is what's important, and you know this thing you know you, you probably will not even remember it in five years. So you need to just you know just to behave and just to just to do whatever you need to do. And everything will be fine. And everything is usually for the best. I mean, if if it falls apart at the moment, so you, you never know. Maybe in five years, it will. You will understand that it 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 was exactly what it needs to be. So uh, even with the hack, I mean, that's a good example because you know how good it can be. Like if uh, you, you know. They, they stole 11 million. I mean, what kind of lesson is that? But now we understand that we became stronger. And for example, like a lot of big exchanges were hacked, Binance, BitHump, and you know, others. And everybody recovered and everybody recovered stronger because they understood that they have like this uh, not very strong, um, you know, strong field uh, or this, uh, they have, I don't know, the, the bridge here. So they need to, be stronger they need to learn a lesson so that's what we did we hired uh two custodians and we hired a security officer that has an amazing experience on the traditional exchanges on nasdaq you know he worked for the london stock exchange for nasdaq for new york stock exchange and uh this is amazing and now we feel like yeah we lost this 11 million but you know now we feel stronger and now you know we, we can you know say that yeah, we learned our lesson. I really resonate with what you said. Uh, there's a quote in English called grace under pressure, that no matter what exactly. happens, you maintain your composure and you just go ahead. Because how worse can it get, right? So, exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you start freaking out, and that's, you know, like the very important thing, your team will, will immediately freak out. If they see that your boss, you know, freaking out i mean everybody's like oh my god he's freaking out she's freaking out i mean what are we are supposed to do and if they see that you know i'm okay i'm calm like guys we need just to do our work and everybody is like wow yeah that's 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 right that's the right thing to do you need to stay calm you know it, it doesn't matter how emotional you are you can be and that's great i guess it's great to be happy and to express joy or to express i don't know sadness but when it comes to really important things that, you know, that, that are happening, so you need to, you know, maintain and be calm. Yeah. That's the sign of a good leader. I think Expo is lucky to have you, Maria. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So talking about Expo again, so I was going through your website and I came across this very interesting uh, cashback option that you guys have. And according to your website, Around 278 Bitcoins have been paid to users in the form of cashback in the last 30 days. So I was wondering if you could tell us more about this cashback program. Yeah, so that's that's not very uh, that's not that interesting how it sounds. Usually, like <laughs> the the exchange now that's that's also like you know that we've been eight years on the market. So right. that's like the the feature of our exchange. Uh, we will change it soon. So basically the exchange usually has the effective commission. So for example, like we do, the more you trade, the less commission you pay. That's very smart and that's very great for the big traders. At the moment, we are the cheapest exchange on the European market. Right. So we do have this feature. So 
basically cashback means uh, you know you pay the commission like the 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 usual commission and we return you cash back uh, so you will be paying less commission so that's that's the same as paying less commission straight you know from the beginning nice. <laughs> but we are we, we have this feature you know we would return the commission back uh, we will change it from july i guess um, it will be the same as uh, on the other exchanges and uh, i can explain actually why do we have it because eight years ago, uh, nobody had this, uh, you know, feature. Everybody was, uh, you know, you trade with 0 0.3 and you trade with 0 0.3. And uh, I believe uh, we were the first to implement this, you know, this, uh, you know, the more you trade, the less you pay. So we introduced this cashback feature because we didn't see any example, like how, how can you do that differently? But yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely, definitely a disadvantage of being that old because we, need, we needed to repair and to, you know, to, to, to make it right. And we needed to replace the old system with a new one. And finally in July, we'll have it, uh, yeah, we'll have it right. So, so uh, let's talk about the crypto market for a second. Um, so a lot of people have been coming forward and telling that uh, crypto payments can redefine the way we look at e-commerce at the moment. Because after the COVID-19 pandemic, online transactions have risen far more than what they used to. So do you think in the near future, crypto can be considered as an alternative to fiat currencies uh, in e-commerce payments? You know, that's a very good question. Um, that's probably the most important question that you can ask on, on, on the current market. Because, you know, we don't really know, we can't really predict that crypto can replace fiat. Because, first of all, I'm not sure this is possible. And, uh, you know, for crypto to replace it, you must be replaced on the governmental level. And that's not what's happening, that's for sure. I'm not saying that governments are against crypto, but they're definitely not not going to let crypto to you know over, over to 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 come and uh, you know overdo this duty that governments uh, are doing so, at the moment. So governments are creating CBDCs. The Russian government uh, two days back issued a statement where they said that they're working on it. China is already test releasing it. Sweden as well is releasing its CBDC. So what does this tell you about the global? CBDC scene as well, because since we're in the discussion. Yeah, CBDCs are not crypto. I mean, uh, they're using blockchain, that's for sure, but they, they have nothing to do with crypto. That's basically a digital national currency. And, you know, it has its advantages, that's for sure. Like, you know, if we're speaking about Russia, they have a very big level of corruption. And, for example, if they will be paying these, I don't know, hospitals or, you know, some, some organizations in this digital national currency, it will be easily tracked, uh, you know, it, it's easy to track, it's easy to see if the funds were really, you know, used, you know, on, on, on this matter that they were supposed to be used. And this is very important. And, um, but, you know, on the other side, it will be, all will be trackable. So you will be living in the world where, you know, you will be, like you know big brother is watching you i guess it's it's still you know correct for now but i mean it will be that that big you know all the money will be traceable but you know i guess like the advantages are still there they're bigger than disadvantages so especially you know especially in these countries where the corruption level is really high so you can really track if your money were sent you know you sent correctly and they will you know some person didn't uh, took over, didn't take over all of, or I don't know, 90% of your funds. And uh, yeah, that's a big problem now. So when they say like CBDC, for example, if you again speak about Russia, uh, basically I know that Russian government doesn't like crypto very much, but they do like digital currencies. And uh, I guess that that's, uh, that's a very great reflection what's happening in the moment. So they embrace the disadvantages of digital or blockchain but they don't want to um don't want to really accept crypto in any ways so the example with libra for example and C C SEC, uh see right <laughs> so uh they uh they rejected libra they said like this is not, this is not going to happen because yeah. mark zuckerberg he has a great audience of billions of people mm -hmm. and um when he 
him and asked uh, the government to let him, you know, launch this crypto, this uh, stable coin, they were scared because, you know, this, they saw it as a threat to their national currency. And um, I believe, you know, as for now, governments are not eager to, to go with crypto. Um, so not sure. I mean, I'm not sure that fiat will be replaced with crypto anytime soon. But I guess we don't need this. Even with the, when we say about the crypto as a payment system, as a payment method. Uh, so yeah, I know that a lot, of, uh, a lot of governments, they were against it. So like you can't pay with crypto or on the territory of the government. But I believe we don't need this. We, I mean, do you, want, do you really want to pay for your coffee with Bitcoin? I don't really think so. It's super volatile. It's, it's not, you know, the purpose of that is not, I don't know, maybe if you're paying the car, but still, I mean, the purpose of, the, of crypto is not, you know, being paid for different goods and services. I believe it's, it's slightly different. So, you know, as soon as, uh, yeah, the governments are fine with trading crypto, with uh, investing in crypto, or they create some regulation on that, we, we're going to be fine. So according to you, what is Bitcoin best suited for? You know, uh, that's, that's another <laughs> very intriguing question. So uh, Bitcoin, uh, you know, I consider Bitcoin, you know, sort of a brand, a brand of crypto. So basically, you know that Bitcoin is not perfect in many ways. Right. So that's not fast. The blockchain is not, is not really amazing. I mean, this is just a brand. So I don't think of a crypto world as only Bitcoin. Bitcoin is great and it's going to be, you know, it's going to be up very soon and it's going to continue its growth just because it's a brand. So uh, it will not go anywhere because it was the first, it enabled other cryptos to happen. I'm more like, you know, re really amazing. Pro I'm, I'm for these uh, really amazing projects or like, you know, when Ethereum um, just appeared and when it introduced the idea of smart contracts that can be used anywhere and basically DeFi and, uh, you know, NFT at the moment, they are all, you know, they are coming from this idea of Ethereum uh, and that's, that's very amazing. And I mean, the world will be changed, that's for sure, due to these pro such projects as uh, Ethereum or DeFi coins or these very fast and smart blockchains that will be solving different issues. So Bitcoin is probably a good means, you know, for investment uh, because, you know, it, as I mentioned, it, it's going to continue its growth uh, because it's a brand. But I'm more, you know, into different projects that, that are solving real issues. So tell us about some of these projects that you're interested in. Again, a little disclaimer: <laughs> <laughs> I'm not allowed to. Uh, I'm not allowed to, to like make an investment advice, or you know, this is me speaking as Maria Stankovic, not as uh, CBDO uh, at Exmo. So that's very important. <laughs> that's uh, what our clients are asking for usually. So uh, again, like Ethereum, that's um, my belief that they will, you know, they will continue its growth, and uh, I believe they will be. Um, you know, the, the price of it will be more than Bitcoins in the end. I mean, either they will have the same price or, you know, it's growth. It's, uh, it will be much ahead than Bitcoin because they have the real project, you know, under, under the coin. They have uh, a great team that is developing it and uh, they have great blockchain. I mean, it has its disadvantages at the moment, but the team, you know, they're trying to solve it. And that's, that's what important. Basically, the whole DeFi sphere and one, one very important note here. Uh, everybody told me like Ethereum is not growing as fast as they, it can, it could. And I was like, why? Everybody was like, but you know, like DeFi and NFT, they're all, all, all of the projects there, most of the projects they built on Ethereum. And I was like, for example, NFT, you're an artist and you know, you are selling your piece 
uh, as an NFT, and you are getting six billion dollars in NFT in, in Ethereum. I'm sorry. Right. So what do you do? You're an artist. You're selling this Ethereum to get real money. For you, like Ethereum is nothing. So you're selling. And can you imagine, like when NFT was booming, basically two or one month ago, everybody was selling Ethereum, and that means like the price should be going down because you know the market will be perceiving it as you know everybody is selling so you need to yeah the price will, should should uh, should have gone down but yeah. it didn't and it continued to grow to grow and uh, that showed us that the serum you know despite the fact that everybody was selling it because you know billion billions of uh, of dollars were sold in ethereum and you know nfts so I guess that that confirms that Ethereum is one of the the greatest projects, and um, yeah, it will continue to grow. I'm a big fan of DeFi. Um, basically, I would like Polkadot. Everybody knows it, and I guess uh, it solves a lot of uh, problems that other, uh, like even Ethereum has. So I guess these projects, and I, I, I believe they they actually appeared on the market like a few years ago. I guess during the ICO times. So uh, they started to, to develop the project. So I guess that is, you know, something to, worth looking at. Uh, I'm also a big fan of, uh, uh, of uh, native exchange tokens. So for example, like we do have one, uh, Expo, Expo Point. Yeah. yeah, it grew 3,000% three, 3, uh, for the last year. So it's great. And I guess if you trade on the exchange, uh, that's, that's great to have a, an exchange token. Uh, in your portfolio because uh, it can you know help you to um, reduce uh, fees for example if you trade you know it, it it's all about the um it's all about the um, basically the project they 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 exchange so you can use it in different situations so yeah so, basically so what i can understand from your from our discussion so far is that you look at crypto as a gateway like it's not replacing fiat anytime soon but it actually helps people do certain things and it acts as a gateway. So for example, the NFT example you gave, uh, where the artist gets the Ethereum, converts it into fiat, and that's the end of the story. But it would not have been possible without Ethereum and the blockchain powering that entire thing. Exactly, so, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, exactly. So, so where do you see this entire sphere headed? So NFTs are growing at the moment, DeFi is booming, and what are your predictions for the next five years? Can you see DeFi maybe replacing a uh, central financial banking, financial products, for example? Do you see them reaching that level? So first of all, uh, NFTs. Uh, I mean, everybody is perceiving NFTs as something for you know this art world, right. but it's not. It's not only. Can you imagine like NFT is a non fungible token? What is that exactly? So if I have a wine, like wine collection, a good wine collection that is stored somewhere, I don't know, in the castle in the front in France, and uh, you know how expensive will it be to transport this collection? So basically, you need a lot of money for transportation, for maintaining certain temperature, whatever. So you can basically you can sell the NFT token. So for example, I want to buy this collection, and I understand how how big these costs are. And I'm like, I'm not sure, but you know, the person can just sell me NFT and I will, I don't know, upload it and everybody will see that I have this collection. Right. I believe that's the only thing why people buy these collections just to show it and to like, guys, I have it and I'm not lying. So this is my NFT for this collection. And the wine keeps, uh, you know, you know, it, it stays uh, where it is staying before or was staying before. So I don't need to, pay a lot of money for transportation, but that's one example. NFT is non-fungible token. Me, I'm a person, I want to vote. I can be this non-fungible token, me, myself. I can vote through this non-fungible token. And everybody can see that, you know, I voted because of blockchain. You can't forger my, my identity. That's my token. Right. So it will be all in blockchain. I know that a lot of uh, governments were talking about this voting on blockchain, but never nobody implemented it 
or I saw some governments that tried to do that, but they didn't really succeed. Uh, so, I mean, but with NFT, if everybody will have NFT, that will be my identity, my eyes, my, I don't know, my fingerprints, whatever. And uh, that's, that's great. That's really the future. So we can't say about NFT only as an art, um, I don't know, it, it serves only the art, but no, it, it's much bigger than that. And I believe, and this will be the future for, for sure. As for DeFi, uh, I'm also very reluctant to say that they will replace central banks. I mean, governments will never do that. And of course, I mean, uh, DeFi is great, but it has its disadvantages also. So it can't really replace central banks, but that will be a good competitor for them. And uh, they will see, because, you know, they're at the moment, Moment, so they are all, you know, have their mon mon monopoly on what they do, but they will see that, you know, crypto and DeFi are developing and they will have to do something in order to maintain their function. So I believe um, they will not replace it, but DeFi will continue to develop and to grow. And maybe we'll see the collaborations of these central traditional systems and DeFi systems. I believe, you know, the smarter the bank is, the, the faster he realizes that he needs to do something with DeFi. And I believe they will do that at least, you know, you know, all these examples that like JP Morgan, five years ago, he said like, you know, Bitcoin is shit basically. And, you know, <laughs> the advice was never buy Bitcoin. And now they are like creating a special department that will be, you know, maintaining the Bitcoin and other crypto sales for their investors. Yeah. I mean, everybody, you know, everybody is really, you know, they're trying to, to make more money. So I believe if, we'll, if they see the opportunity to make more money, I believe they will do something with DeFi. You know, in terms of the price and, uh, you know, all the Bitcoin and other crypto, as I mentioned, Bitcoin will be definitely growing because it's a brand. And, uh, you know, a lot of uh, hedge funds and funds and prop firms already invested. And I believe they will not let Bitcoin grow, sorry, like fall, uh, right. fall more because they bought it, I don't know, when it was 30. Uh, and uh, that's not in their interest. And I believe they, they can do... Like they can still manipulate market. You know, it, it sounds just really awful, but they can do that because we have no regulation at the moment. That what uh, that exactly what Elon Musk Elon Musk do does. Mm. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's that's very uh, very. I believe it will change, but you know, as for now, they can do something to manipulate the market. As for other cryptos, really, uh, you know, like it was. 2017 and uh, the year of ICO scams. And everybody said that, you know, there are no good projects and everything is scam and a lot of people got scammed and that was really a bad year. But now uh, I believe everybody is so financially, so better financially educated and people really evaluate the project and they see the advantages, they, they can, you know, divide scam from the real project. And I believe that there are many, many good projects on the market. And, um, you know, we'll see a few more, a few more bl good blockchains uh, that will lead us to something something amazing. Well, that was really uh, insightful uh, commentaries. Thank you so much, Maria, for those. Final question for the interview is, where do you see Exmo Exchange heading? Because you guys are already in the top 30 worldwide. And obviously you have plans of expanding into other countries as well. You mentioned that you're also trying to get into the US market. So where do you see Exmo Exchange heading uh, maybe in the next couple of years? You know, we three years ago, uh, we made our choice and uh, we went uh, to their regulation sphere. So we, we've become one of the exchanges that is regulated, that is compliant, that is doing all the QAC ML checks. I don't know if it's a good decision. I mean, uh, who am I to judge? I mean, I'm I'm definitely on this. I'm like I'm for this decision, but I see different exchanges that are making money. Uh, you know, not doing any checks and uh, not doing any KYC, and they're still on the market, and nobody nobody can do anything about it. So I believe we made the right decision. 
because I see them in five years, I see the market only with regulated exchanges. Maybe there will be five or maybe 10 or I don't know, maybe 15, but they all will be regulated. And uh, we see, you know, like when we compare or when we set an example, like our, our perfect exchange or our perfect example, we definitely see uh, that we want to be more like Coinbase or Kraken. Uh, so that's our, like, I don't know, sort of an example uh, where we want to go. Um, so uh, I see us again as a regulated, very compliant wide exchange uh, that is operating all over the world. As I mentioned, we are, uh, we've already um, registered with FinCEN, so we are going to the US market. I believe, uh, yeah, that will be a great challenge and a great opportunity for us because it's not easy. Because, you know, as I mentioned, these giants, they're working there like Coinbase and Kraken. But I believe we can, you know, we can be a very competitive, uh, a very competitive exchange because we have a great interface and, uh, you know, from the technical point of view, I believe we can, we can show them something also. So, yeah. Um, and um, I believe it's all about the bridge between fiat and crypto world. Uh, we, we, well, uh, I consider us a perfect bridge between fiat and crypto world because a person can, you know, deposit any type of, I don't know, any types of money like GBP used the euro rubles, very exotic currencies, and they can deposit it via SIPA, SWIFT, credit card, different local payment uh, opportunities. And so, and, you know, it's easy, it's very transparent. Uh, you can withdraw your money also to, to your bank account, whatever. So that will be a perfect bridge that is regulated, compliant, and working all over the world. Uh, we are con I believe we will continue to grow. We are growing. Our London team is growing. So I'm very excited about what, what will be happening in the next five years. All right. Thank you so much, Maria, for uh, coming on this interview and sharing with us your opinions. Uh, I had a great time. I got a lot of insight. So thank, thank you Thank so you much. very much for having. Thank you very much for these smart questions. Always, <laughs> always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.